Welcome to Overtime on Inferno, your weekly roundup of all the big stories in CSGO. Quicker than teams are trying to beat Cologne's roster lock. A quick reminder to rate and review us at the end of the episode. It really helps us. I'm Logan. This is AZS. Let's get into it. We have two, two portions of the show today. We have the what happened in the previous tournament that just happened this last weekend portion, and then the what is going to happen in the next big tournament, a.k.a. roster moves. It's very normal. This is how every show works. I don't know why I felt the need to explain it, but here we are. <laughs> if you've never listened to a podcast before, basically what it is, is we get us to talk about things and you listen to it in like forty-five, like 30 to 45 minute segments. It's amazing. It's a Jesus. brilliant format. So, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll start with this pla- past. This past weekend... Um, Blast, what was this officially called? Blast Showdown, Blast Premier, Blast Blast Premier Lisbon, I think it's... I, I've, what? I've given Some up blast like, trying to figure out the name of Blast tournaments. Some Blast event happened this weekend. Their event was great. Uh, I just don't know what they're called. It was Blast Premier Spring Final 2022 in Lisbon. Oh yeah, rolls off the tongue. Yeah, just super catchy. So, in that extremely catchy event... Um, Navi won. Yeah, which is good. That's really good. because That's good. Because FaZe Clan, well, I Lost. mean, I was going to say FaZe Clan have a challenger, but it's more like, can FaZe Clan challenge Navi again? It's yeah, kind of cool. Say, like, we, we finally have the the um, the um Man United Arsenal rivalry. We have the like liquid Astralis rivalry. We have like the big two who are going to butt heads and... Clash for every event title, and then there's you know there's a couple of plucky little upstarts like Ents who might do something. But we have we're back to having two big teams who can win every event between them, and there's yeah. like a big rivalry that's brewing between FaZe and Navi, and and Navi won with a stand-in. What well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why having a stand-in is suddenly so good, but but something like something's happened where having a stand-in just makes you a better team. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. There's no logic to it. I mean, Sunday Young is a good player. He's yeah. probably a better player in the server than Boomage. And apparently Electronic's a better in-game leader. So somehow Na'Vi have taken maybe the best team of all time. And made it better. And gotten better by adding a guy who was cut, who was benched by Spirit. It's very similar to when like Astralis picked up Majisk after he was benched by North. Except, I think even fewer people expected Someday Young to be the missing yeah. link. I mean, he is a good player. Like, I've always liked and, Someday and, Young. But... And to be fair, this is gut reactions after one tournament. Of course, but... Look. One tournament which, like, while FaZe was there, the people that they played in the finals was not FaZe. And it yeah, wasn't but, they, but they did obliterate FaZe. Yes. No, no, no... No if and or but there. I'm just they, more more saying that like yeah, this they, was not but, the, but, this but, not a it, major, not the most stacked sure, event. Of the it, it's not like when um, like Astralis beat Ents in the final of the. Like, you know what I mean? Like they didn't beat yeah. they beat nobody good. It was they'd already beaten Phase. <clears throat> Sorry, they'd already beaten Phase. They dismantled Phase, and they looked like the team who won the Stockholm major. Like, I, I don't know, Navi are back until yeah, so, Simple takes a break and then we, we, we and go the, back. Yeah. So that's the first of the five moves, five, six moves we got to chat about today is some die young to Navi. Yeah. Um, Simple came out and said, where is it? He said, he uh, said I hope Simple he plays in Cologne, right? I hope he will play in Cologne. Yeah. So, so apparently Simple likes playing with Sunday Young. Uh, it I'm seems sure like they're fucking does. They just won. <clears throat> I was to say it seems like they're winning with Sunday Young. Uh, let's do a quick rundown of the rest of the teams that were at Blast Premier quickly. Uh, Vitality finished in second place after a 2-0 loss in the finals to Navi. I'm still unsure how Vitality got here. I'm still confused. Please explain. Oh, I have no idea. Um, okay, lovely. I, I I'm not convinced this is that this seems like not a, f- a fluke is obviously the wrong word, but this doesn't seem like something that's going to keep happening to me personally. Okay. Um, the, the way they they lost the final as well, it was particularly one sided. Um, I, I I'm not I, I just 
I know a lot of people looked at this roster on paper and were like, oh yeah, no, that you know, there's so many winners in this team, or there's so many good players. And I look at it and I go, how does this team compete firepower wise with Navi and FaZe? How does it compete firepower wise with G2? How does it compare yeah. firepower wise with like I don't know, spirit? Like you have obviously you have Z Wu who's on his own firepower. Yeah. Like he is he has the firepower of a small country. But Dupree is inconsistent as like I mean he's an entry fragger, like that's fine. Like you don't yeah. necessarily need him to be wildly consistent. Apex can't frag anymore. Fine. Again, you have Zwu. Don't necessarily. Well, he's your he's your in game leader. You don't need him to yeah. like ultra frag anymore. Yeah. Um, Majisk, good anchor player, but he's not like a massive frag. Like he's a he can frag, he can play. He's he's not weak link or anything, but he's also not hunter. He's also yeah. not bit. And then, uh, and then Misuta, who again inconsistent. Like I like Misuta. I think Misuta's pretty good. But he isn't again. He he's not electronic or bit. He's not Hunter or Monacy. Like he's yeah. he's probably a tier below that. And I look at this team and I go, yes, they're all good players, but they miss a bona fide second star. And I think that's where they're gonna where they're eventually gonna struggle. And it's all good players who have never played international teams. Yeah, right. Dupree and Majest come from Danish only teams for a large majority of their careers, if not all, right? The only possibility is North, but I actually think that they were all Danish at the time Majisk was there. But they only went international with Mixwell and then later on Lecro. Well, and then Zaiwu, Masuta, and Apex, all French teams the entire time. We we were all surprised that this was Apex's first international team, if I remember correctly. He has has a very strong accent. I can imagine it can be difficult. Yeah, but my point is, is you have three people who have, Three people only have needed to speak French in terms of Counter Strike. Two people who have only need to speak English in terms of Counter Strike, uh, uh, Danish in terms of Counter Strike. Even though the Danes' English is extremely good. Oh yeah, it is flawless. Like better than all Americans. Like let's be clear here. I no, you're oh, not going to see any disagreement from me. Nope. <laughs> um, it it's still rough for everyone there because there, I guarantee there's callouts that they need to relearn and that kind of stuff just like yeah. random stuff so and, um, and i think that definitely is a factor because with the thing i just mentioned about firepower you could easily aim that at uh, astralis um i think the big difference would be would be glaive being a better player than apex but they made up for it with extremely tight team play which is a lot harder to do when you're talking in your second language with people you haven't played with for that long so I, I think it is a, an important factor. And international teams, in my opinion, only work when you can get an insane amount of firepower to overcome those team play differences. I think G2, um, I guess Mouse is the is the one that didn't have insane firepower, but they were still pretty good. Yeah. Um. On to the next team here. We're going to go through, through these kind of quick. does not make sense to do a 20-minute deep dive on every single one of these. Uh, G2, the perennial and not in the finals and disappointment team, yeah. uh, continue to do just that. They were we'll not in the finals. Make a roster move and yeah. God knows who it's going to be. Yeah, they're probably going to... Yeah, you can't even say you're going to sign because Carlos just seems to pull players out of nowhere with some magical amount of money. Um, oh yeah, they'll, they'll probably sign your Kindar and ruin him or something. Like, I don't know. Or they're going to make sign a move for be the best team of all time. I don't fucking know. No, they're going to make some random move for simple or some shit, and then just go from it for it. Or Zaiwu wants out of uh, Zaiwu wants out of Vitality. They, they'll sign Zaiwu and just they'll go with it. <laughs> like these, I, 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 nah. There's there's no way they get rid of no. Honesty though, unless they're going to turn one of them into a rifler. Yeah. No. Easy. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Carlos show. Did you know uh, um, Henny? Was it Henny and um, KNG? Were they both all? Yep. yep. Yeah, just had two main authors. Genius. Yep. Um, OG, who had a really surprising event, as I yawn mid sense. Uh, OG, who had a really, really surprising event. This event uh, made it to semifinals, top of their group, though. Group play was a little weird here because there was only two games in a four-team group, which means every team did not play every other team but they did play the two hard hitters in the group they played navi and ends won both matches lost to navi in the semis um surprising from them 
Dexter is insane as a sub, which we could have yeah. all expected. But Dexter's just a really, really, really good player. <laughs> there's, there's no, yeah, there's, there's kind of nothing to say about him. He, he is just a, an exceptional player. Every team he joins seems to overperform. The, the two spirit lineups he's been on have been like at time, like one of them finished top four at Cologne. And then the other one finished top four at the major. Yeah. He's now on OG, who looks pretty mediocre. He joins them as a stand in. They finish top four at a big event. Like, it, he's, you just, you just sort of bring him in and finish top four. Yeah. Uh, on, and uh, to be fair, that's a good move. If you're Dexter, yeah. if, if you're Dexter, you can, you can advertise yourself. I'm the top four guy. If you want to get to the top four, I got you. He he could just become a mercenary, like just <laughs> orper for hire. Whenever somebody needs a stand-in, like they just bring in Dex to finish top four, and I was like, oh my god, everyone should sign him, and he just disappears into the night. <laughs> All right, uh, next on my list is a slightly disappointing ends. Um, yeah, it's going to happen. This is, this is a team that's been riding insanely high, um, probably playing above their level you'd expect. I think some of that will be. That there are teams underperforming, Vitality G two and such, like who who don't look as good as you might expect. So Ents mm-hmm. have been the one who's like usurped them. If and when these teams find some form again, I think Ents are gonna drop off a little bit. They're still an exceptionally good team. Yep, absolutely. But, but they I, are gonna have off events. I also think that they they fell down to the curse of whatever Vitality did and whatever OG did, considering those were two of the three games that they played this event. Um, the Vitality's overperformance this event and OG's overperformance this event also played into the end downfall this event. I, I think <clears throat> the, stylistically, I can understand why they would struggle against a Vitality or OG because Ents are one of the, the off-meta teams who aren't built around their AWPA. Fury are the other big team who are built around their Riflers over their AWPAs. Like, this team is clearly Madden and Spinks forward. Whereas Vitality is obviously just built around Zwu, and OG were giving Dexter all of his roles. Like that's the clear mismatch there, and you can sort of understand how they would lose those sort. Of I'd games. actually, I'd be willing to argue the not build around an opera thing because I think there's a lot of teams that are that way. Like in this event, Phase is that way. Phase like, are, but in a different sense. I mean, they're built around twists and rops. They're built around rops mainly, but like. The, the the play is still like they're still aiming to get Brokey into a clutch that they're, they're built around Brokey the same way like Mouse Sports were built around Oscar where it wasn't necessarily give Oscar all the resources it was get Oscar into a post plant and he will shut it down because that's what Oscar was so good at whereas okay en- Ents are quite literally Hades you hold this um Madden and Spinks are gonna but bo- are gonna like battering ram their way into a site. Yep. Fury are the same, where it's like they're all. Put, I think Liquid actually are another team who are kind of similar. OC sits at the back and he throws flashes for him, and then he holds and then he holds the flank. He holds he holds a position, but he's not the one who's necessarily expected to go off to to, to carry the games. NIP, NIP, yeah, actually, yeah, very good. Te- technically, right yeah. now because NIP, of, yeah, 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 they, they, they obviously have wouldn't have been if they had. To, well, maybe they would have actually. I, I think device. I don't. Device we, is just like the best support opera of all time. Yeah. But he's still a support okay. opera in a sense. Um, okay, back to back to spring finals. Um, phase, speaking of which, uh, they were there. They played the video game. Uh, they left. They had a nice time to explore Portugal. <laughs> yeah. um, Lots of that's... time, in fact, because they finished yeah. very early in their game against Na'Vi. Yeah, so that's... I don't... I think it's an off event. I'm not... Here's the big thing. I wouldn't take any huge like notices, thoughts, etc. from this blast premiere. Major was event. a fluke. <laughs> I don't think that much. Um, you are beeping. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there's a the truck computer about to explode. What? One moment, please. The face clan are about to explode. Face clan are about to explode. That's, that's exactly what the, I got the major was a fluke. Um, a, bit, a bigger fluke than Cloud Nine at Boston. <laughs> They're never going to win an event again. Carrigan's retiring next month. Um, Twist is going back to NA. He's switching to Valorant. Uh, Rops, 
He's going back to mouse sports. He's going to try and fix mouse sports. You say all these things as if they wouldn't happen, but like Loki's going to G two. I'm convinced that like half of these could happen. No, there's uh, no way. To, there's no way. Twist like three weeks after shit talking all the players who went to Valorant would go to Valorant. I said half. I didn't say all. Yeah, yeah. Carrigan, <laughs> Carrigan is retiring. The major was a fluke, but Twist is staying. No, Rob uh, like, is, Rob's yeah. is not going back to Mass Pro. It's, it's it's obviously too early. Yeah. Um it's obviously too early to say the team's dead. Oh, they're they're definitely not dead. They have too much firepower and them so they themselves have just like I think too much want to be dead. But but also <sighs> Like, obviously, saying the major was a fluke blah, blah, is a joke, but but Navi are now back at full strength and just wiped the floor with them. Navi at full strength smashed everyone at Stockholm. I don't see how... like I could see in two months' time us looking back and saying the signs were there that Navi are just a much, much, much better team than FaZe. And the the stop the Antwerp major sorry was a case of Navi were not at full strength. Simple wasn't at his best. They they've had all these problems behind the scenes with Boomic, with with moving, obviously because of the, the war with electronic. You know maybe not being in the right position, and now they're settled like they were at Stockholm. They are just better than Phase, and that major was just perfect timing for Phase. Where they had just peaked, Navi weren't peaking. Like we could look back on that in a couple months and go, actually, while it wasn't a fluke, it was a lot of stars aligning for Phase, almost literally. Um, and they're actually they were the best team at the time, but they aren't better than Navi holistically. And I think that's a reasonable point to make. We yeah, will I see in a few think. months if it comes true. I, I'd, I'd absolutely agree. Okay. Uh, Pain and Big. Two Pain last big. place teams. Big and um, Big era. Big and Big Uzi era. Uh, they were last place. Yeah. Honestly, in this event, I didn't expect more from them. So Yeah. Big are, like, just, are just... They're just an eighth team. Like, they're fine. I'm kind of sick of talking about Big. There's kind of nothing new you can say about them. Pain... I, the, I have to give a lot of credit to Payne because they lost Safe, who was their best player, and they're still decent. Like, they're still... Point, like, they're not... They haven't got a lot worse after losing their best player, and that yeah. that deserves a lot of credit. Um, they, they put up a decent showing, obviously didn't do very well, but, like, they weren't expected to. There's a lot of very good teams here, and even the teams who were struggling weren't struggling at this event, so... You can't expect much more than this. Yeah, exactly. I to be, yeah. I I didn't expect Pain to do much. They're they're not they're not a uh, European super team like nine out of the ten teams here were. Um, like exactly. realistically, there there are eight teams here, and one, two, three, four, five of them at least are trying to fight right now for a major championship when it rolls around. Yeah, right. When we get to Cologne, and there's five of and big. I put OG in big, but still, <laughs> my point is, is that five, like a good chunk of these teams are going to be trying to fight for like, they're fighting for a clone title right now. So I don't expect pain to, to do a huge amount there um, on, on the not fighting front for, for, for a blast event. Yeah. Um, okay. Roster moves. We have a couple to get to We'll go through them quick. There, there's some that are important. There's some that are not that important. Uh, so I want to talk about ESL conference as well at the end. Ah, cool okay. story involved there. That, that just finished, right? We'll do that before we finish do the yeah. so, so let's do that first. Okay, so uh, basically, this was a, a qualifying event for Pro League. Um, and it was kind of hype. Like, I, I, I worked the event, so I watched every game. Um, and the, the big story is FTW. Um, if you don't know these guys, I don't blame you because they were very inexperienced team. They came in as the youngest team in the event, a uh, Portuguese team. Uh, and they lost their first game 2-0, didn't get double figures in a map, and then they lost 16-1 to Sprout. And the, in, on their own map pick, they lost 16-1, facing elimination, 
then won the next two maps against Sprout, 2 0 order, and then won 2 1 um, in the deciding game, and they're now going to Pro League. It was like they looked completely dead. Six, lost 61 on their own map pick against Sprout, who were one of the bigger teams at the event, who were in Pro League last year. Knocked out Sprout from that position, 2 0 order, and then won their final game against Illumina to qualify, which is so cool because. Portugal, with the heartbreak of Saw not making it to the major, and that was like considered like a, not a Portuguese super team as such, but it had a lot of the big players from Portugal. To then, like a couple months later, these young kids have just qualified for Pro League against all odds. Like there was not a single person expected them to go through. Certainly not when they got two owed and then were one 0 down against Sprout, and they went all the way and qualified. It was, it was crazy. Like and. I think both both games they won a decider on were on Vertigo. Um, teams keep letting them get Vertigo as a decider. It looks like their best map to me. I, I think you, you, sh you should probably just ban Vertigo against them. Um, for Sprout, they were just awful. Like, Sprout were expected to finish top six at this event. There's there's kind of no ifs and buts yeah, about when that. Yeah, you, when, you when you look at the names, right, that makes sense. Yeah. And they just they just went out zero two. They just lost both games. They they lost the opening game to Illuminar, I believe, and then uh, Hummer Hummer. Who's oh, the Hummer, former, that was it. Yeah, Hummer's a Brazilian team of names that you may have recognized at one point. Uh, they existed. They're ex Sao Caetano, I believe. <laughs> she tells no, you everything you need to know. They're Sao Caetano. Is that yeah. the team? Yeah, it's sure. ex Sao Caetano, I believe. Um, it is. Which is the prior Imperial before Imperial. Yes. Current Imperial. And then the other team that need a mention is Tyloo, who... Jesus Christ, dude. Their post-plants genuinely make me ill. I, they're revolting. They are just... Uh, they were horrendous. Like, they were... They, they won the opening game against Strife, which... NA, who cares? Uh, they lost to MIBR. Looks pretty decent. And then their final game, I think it was against Illuminar. Um, they got five maps. That uh, five rounds over two maps. They got obliterated. And the second map, they lost sixteen three on overpass. Tyloo before that game had a hundred percent overpass win rate in the last three months. Illuminar had no officials on it. Tyloo lost sixteen three. They were awful. And they're sixteen two on Mirage, which is another one of their map, like favorite maps. I don't know what happened, but they were horrendous. They got absolutely smashed by Illuminar, who aren't that good a team. Illuminar are fine, but they are not that good. Tyloo just looked horrendous, and I, I, like I, I've always liked Tyloo. I always liked watching them at big events, but not this team. This team is terrible. <laughs> All right, I have I have one more bit of information from this event. I got another event we got to cover super quick, yeah. and then we'll get into roster moves. Uh, teams that moved on to Pro League from this event are teams you'd expect. So Outsiders, Eternal Fire, MIBR, uh, in the fifth, sixth place, uh, FTW and Heat, and a team that you probably may have expected to move on, but definitely not in first to fourth, is the new look endpoint with Kierby, who did not drop a map. Yeah, and Kierby looked good. Kierby looks fine. Nerds looked incredible. Okay. I don't know what I don't know what happened. Nerds was like a decent player on this team, and Kierby came in, and it was kind of expected he'd be the star. And then Nerds just dropped like thirty in back to back maps. I think in their in their qualifying game, like he was fucking lights out. He was unbelievable. Sorry, he, he had a one point six rating on the two maps against Order. Yeah, That's I mean it is it, it is Order, but. He was also Still. very good against Heat, if I remember rightly. Yeah, he was a 1.38 against Heat, who were not a bad team at all. Yeah, um, Nerds was just completely just dominant in both of their series. He was possibly the best player at the event. Um, I think Flit, maybe. Is the, the actual answer, Flit, was... Uh, outsiders, I, I know it's a lower tier event, so they were expected to qualify, but the manner in which they qualified was impressive. Like, they they never ever looked like there was a chance of them dropping a map. They were so comfortable. Flit was just just running out and railing people over and over again. Like he was he was completely smurfing. It was 
it was actually kind of disgusting. Norbert and Fame slotted in reasonably well. I think Norbert is going to be the sort of Yakinda replacement. He's going to be the aggressor. Um, but he always has Flit, who's just a Swiss Army knife rifle. Like, he can do everything. Uh, I think Flit, everyone kind of knows he's good, but I'm not sure everyone realizes how good he is. He yeah. he, he might be, like, he, he might be up there for top 20 next year, or, or like, by the end of the year. Like, he is, it, especially on this version of the roster, I think he's going to be incredible. I think he's going to be absolutely insane. That we'll see, but I think he could be like up there in the upper echelons by the end of the year. He, he, this team looks like it could be insanely dangerous. All right, I got, I got one quick event we got to talk about. It's North American event. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm bringing back people we've had on previously. So we had Koi on, who was the Davenport University coach, um, who told us to be excited for where the team is going. Um, since that point, they've signed Sonic, former extra salt cloud nine player which yeah that's really cool um and somebody else who i cannot remember off the top of my head not the point neither of the new players played in this match um but they played uh in fragadelphia in chicago which is one of the big fragadelphia feeder events and they got second place against actually decent north american teams and the important thing that i want to sh- like point out here is that Koi's whole like thing of I want to make NA good again is not total bullshit in PR speak because this team is actually like working. Yeah. They 16 2 Axolotls on their own map pick of Vertigo, and it was like 14 1 in the first half, and I think Axolotls won like the last round. I um, so, they beat Bad News Bears as well, if I remember right. Oh yeah, they yeah, I, yeah, that wasn't that big of a deal. No, uh yeah, no, they, they absolutely did beat Axolotls bad. is. Yeah. No, they, they beat Bad News Bears 2 out. Like, this team is a real team. They are actually here to stay. Um, and that's an exciting thing. That's, I think that's that's all I have from. Yeah. I, from this you team. can definitely see that as exciting, or you can go the other way. And so the fact that these estab- established teams are losing to teams like Davenport University probably isn't a good thing. To be fair, Bad News Bears did not have their full lineup, uh, which is what I got from koi on this uh they were missing i think it was swan right okay yeah they were missing swan and uh spongy so they right, feel okay. droid and uh their coach instead not the point wanted to touch on that quickly okay roster moves there are many of them we'll go quick first liquid has officially benched uh, shocks and surprisingly I, I legitimately think this was surprising because i don't i didn't know about this as far as i'm aware ryan didn't know about i don't think anyone knew about um, Liquid benched Adren, the coach as well. Um, they signed Daps to replace him. Correct. He's cool. Which I think is a good move. Yeah, I like Daps. <clears throat> which means that we're gonna have Stanislaw coach in like four months. That's how it, that works, yep. right? Yeah. I, <laughs> um, I don't think so. So the the rumor is they were trying to get JKS and Snacks as um as sons, standins, not for Cologne. standins for Cologne, not um, full time. Can't get either. Yep. Uh. They they then tried to get one of the Carpe DM players and EG just said lol no, so nobody knows who's going to stand in for them at Cologne. I do know that they're trying to get, uh, obviously they're trying to find a shocks replacement, but I, I've heard they're trying to sign they're trying to make other roster moves as well. I don't right. know if any of them will come to fruition, but uh, there's there's big changes I think it's trying to happen at Liquid. I don't know what's what's going to happen. We'll see. We'll see what goes on there. Okay. Uh, next, a, a quick little not roster move, but it, it comes up on my news feed in, in order. Uh, Simple broke the MVP record with his MVP in Blast, which was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, right. he, he's just the best player of all time. Yeah, the, there's there's not a question about it. Um, so Heroic benched Refresh a couple days ago, um, which I think was a move surprising in a degree of like, oh, wow, they benched Refresh. That's okay um but they're instead signing yabby from copenhagen flames which we knew we we kind of had inklings was going to happen we knew that the copenhagen flame players were splitting apart right we knew that uh what was it? roy and nikodaz are on fanatic now yeah. uh so Yabby's now over on heroic which in reality is an upgrade for yabby so cool yeah uh <laughs> so so i always give a shout out to, to harry nero um 
who was our social media guy now works at HLTV, who he, he went back and watched a lot of heroic demos and went back and watched old SK demos. And he said, uh, heroic system, like most orping IGL systems, is based off the old Luminosity SK one, um, mm. which would make refreshes rolls, cold zeros rolls, which puts into perspective. Yeah. When he struggles on LAN, like it's, he, it's like an actual yeah problem. he should be he shouldn't be the one struggling it should be some of the other players like it's fine when uh like shush struggles or, or something because it's like okay yeah fine but refresh kind of has decent roles and doesn't perform but he's a good player it's just i i don't know if he's quite top tier um okay two three more moves um next fanatic has added heap on trial and this goes with the next piece of the news which is dignitas has officially closed their counter-strike division uh, that includes the women's counter-strike division though that hasn't been existing for a little while they've moved to a valorant team um if you were curious i don't know if you were um <laughs> but Heap will come over from Dignitas right now for the Fnatic lineup. I believe they are playing now or soon to play in Rubet. No, yeah, I think I'm Rubet lying. starts as we Dude. record tomorrow as you listen. Yes, it yes, is Wednesday. Rubet. Yeah, it's Tuesday. It's a weird day. Yeah, um, I'm working <laughs> tomorrow, so. Yeah, basically, uh, TLDR, uh, they, they added Heap on trial. We're going to have to wait for this to to see because Fnatic's made so many moves, right? They've added Nico Dice, they added Roy, they added Heap, um, maybe. That basically anything at this point, we have to wait and see because I can't tell you how Nico Dice and Roy are going to work out because all they've played with so far has been Forest. Uh, they're so. actually not playing at... Yeah, they're not well, playing, they are playing... They are currently playing as we're recording. They're playing against Into the Breach in the Repub League. Oh, yes, I knew that because... It's everything you need to know about this current Fnatic roster. It's Smuya versus Mezzi, but from the the other way than people yeah. thought. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, one last roster... Uh, two, one roster move, one announcement move. Um, Spirit have added Wonderful as Dexter's replacement. Um, Good, we have, great move. Uh, I, I heard I heard a lot of teams, and I mean a lot of teams, lot, wanted yeah. Wonderful. The kid is like 17. He was putting up crazy numbers on Hellraisers, and the team he was on before that, I can't remember who it was. Um, I, I've only watched him a handful of times. He, he passes the eye test decently well, but statistically, he's phenomenal. Um He's an, he's another he's the next one off the conveyor belt of ridiculous CIS authors by the looks of things. Yeah. Time will tell if he's as good as Dexter, but if he's even like nearly as good as Dexter at seventeen, and you've got a fucking ridiculous player on your hands, um, I think this is such a good move for Spirit. It's a good move for Wonderful. It's a good move all around. I like it. It's good. I expect I expect good things from Wonderful. Um, I expect wonderful things from Wonderful. I'll see myself out soon. Uh, last thing on the agenda for today, something that our good friend Harry just sent to us um, that I saw pop in as I we were here that I actually saw this morning and then forgot about. Uh, Flashpoint's officially dead. Wait, if you weren't, it? yeah, it wasn't already dead. No, they fired Monte Cristo today. <laughs> This is like the Mandela effect, where people thought Nelson Mandela yeah. died in prison. And yeah, so I no. thought Flashpoint died months ago. Years so basically, ago. so okay, basically TLDR, uh, Flashpoint's parent uh, B site isn't legally defunct yet. This is this right. is from a Jacob Wolf report. Uh, the, the board contains two members, which is representatives from Immortals, which is the MIBR owners, oh, and God. Dignitas. It's also laid off. All uh, its remaining staff, including Monte Cristo, who was the commissioner for Flashpoint, and Dignitas themselves just left Counter Strike, meaning they have left the board of. They're leaving the board of B site. So basically, it's dead. What were they, um, What have they been doing? I don't know, but would you? Do you remember the team, the member teams originally in Flashpoint? Oh God, so many of them don't exist. It was like. Cloud Nine were there. Cloud Nine were there. They Mad do Lions. Exist. Mad Lions were there. MIBR. Dignitas. Yeah. yeah. This is where it gets hard. God. Fours? No. 
Um, Jesus. I've got no idea. Fun plus Phoenix. Oh, yes, that's it. Uh, Team Envious. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Contact Gaming. Yeah, I mean, they became Ent, sort of, so that's yeah. fine. Um, and Gen G. Oh, my Lord. Was that with um, um, BN10 that and Automatic? Yep, that was the Kusta. God, that's weird that that, that happened. Dabs, Gen G, Psalm, yep. Um, and, like, a totally separate thing of people that we have differing opinions on to others um with this with uh monty getting uh fired from or quitting or whatever however it ended up happening from uh flashpoint b-site he no uh flashpoint no longer controls insight on esports right um which is the youtube channel that he runs with thorin yeah. where they do i believe it's what is it summoning insight um for horsemen overwatch shows basically a ton of podcasts and stuff right so that explains what they were doing why they still existed correct so they so insight on esports will exist and continue to exist um which is a totally separate interesting thing but i think that's it for the news i think so if there's anything else we've missed um just um, add it at AZSK on Twitter and yell at him that we missed the news. Yeah. Also, yeah. remember that we recorded on th- on Tuesday. So yeah. If so so if you missed something that happened yesterday, then uh, it's not so, our yeah. fault. Well, it is our fault, but it's... Yeah. The, it's if, if something big happens, we'll probably do the normal thing where I'll just, like, be a single person at the end and just go, hello, thing happened. Yeah, so if something's happened, it's like a post-roll credits thing, you know, like a Marvel films. <laughs> like I'll after- probably... After the credits, Logan comes in and says, "Yeah, oh, by the way, Simple's like switched to Valorant. Yeah, and Carrigan's retired." <laughs> All right, that's gonna be it from us for the day. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at LoganRapUp at AZESK and at ReadTLDR. We'll be back again next week with pre Cologne. Maybe I don't know. Possibly, I, maybe it, it's weird. Player, yeah. Let's say yeah. Let's say yeah. All right. See ya. Yeah. yeah.